That's Tom back here doing another update video. Uh, yeah, I try to keep this one a little bit shorter than last time. I know we got cut off, so uh, let's get into it. First up here, we got Kenny Cox and the Contemporary Jazz Quintet introducing Kenny Cox. Um, yeah, really good. It's like post bop kind of stuff. I know I've talked about them before. Um, I've definitely talked up the uh, Contemporary Jazz Quintet as well as Kenny Cox. Really great uh, Detroit jazz group. Like I said, this is more post bop. Their first record out on Blue Note from 68. Um, it is on uh, that Blue Note label, so Liberty Pressing, obviously, but 68. Um, yeah, same usual uh, cats in the group Charles Moore, Leon Henderson, uh, Joe Henderson's brother. Uh, Kenny Cox, obviously the leader, Ron Brooks, and Danny Spencer. Like I said, really, really good stuff. Definitely recommend checking them out, like I've said before. Um, I need one more of theirs to complete uh, the discography, so yeah. Really solid uh, music from them. Can't go wrong with them, in my opinion. Next up, one I got turned on to from uh, Chris Cole, New John Cole Train 68, told me about this. This is Mel Ellison with Friends, um, private pressing on a label called New Jazz, I believe, even though the label is just kind of plain, it's like a plain blue label, looks like that. Uh, but it's like jazz uh, fusion-y, kind of spiritually at times. Um, I don't know, it's really good private press out of California, out of uh, the Bay Area, I believe. Berkeley. Uh, so you got... Mel Ellison on tenor sax, Smith Dobson on piano, Charles Metcalf on bass, Brad Bill Horn on drums, Glenn Cronkite on percussion, Cal Lewiston on trumpet, uh, Tom Alexander on sax as well, John Bennett and Dan Riga on trombones. So, two players. Um, yeah, really great stuff though, like I said. Kind of fusion-y, um, I don't know, like spiritually, really good jazz. Um, I'm not sure how easy it's just to find. It's not expensive. It's just, I guess, one that doesn't show up a lot, I'm assuming. I haven't really seen it around a bunch, so. But yeah, if you find it, it shouldn't be too expensive. Like I said, um, really good stuff. I didn't really know what to expect and quite enjoyed it. Finally picked up a copy of uh, Music Inc. Live at Slugs Volume 1. Not sure how bad the glare is, but let's take it out of there. Oh, let's try it east. Had volume two, finally got volume one um, with Stanley Cowell. Uh, Stanley Cowell, Charles Tolliver, easily Cecil McBee, Jimmy Hopps. So recorded in 70, I want to say. Recorded in 70, yep. Yeah. Slugs released in 72. So it was cheap, it was like seven bucks or eight bucks. The covers kinda not the greatest as you can see, but classic Strata East label. Yeah, the cover's not the best, but who cares? The record's fine. Plays fine and just I needed it. So finally got that. Um yeah. Haven't been picking up too many Strata East, but I definitely grab them when I can for uh, the right price and this was definitely the right price, so I noticed that a lot of like black jazz strata Easter going up in price uh, way more than it used to be, so kind of staying away from those for now. This was a really cool find. Um, one of those where you're looking for a record for a while, can't find it, um, you can't find it for you know a good deal, whatever the reason may be, and then you're going to come across one, but two. So, Kaleida um, by Tootie Heath, or Kumba Tootie Heath, in this case. Really, really excellent spiritual jazz album. Um, just great, great stuff. I'm sure you guys, most of you guys notice that are watching this, but if you don't, I highly recommend this one. I originally came out on the OB label. This is a reissue on Trip. Uh, Trip Jazz, black label. Really great, though. I found this one, and then I got one in like a trade, like right afterwards, so, um, yeah. I ended up trading that one. But um, you got Tootie Heath on here, like I said. You got Buster Williams, Don Cherry, M. Toomey. Um, I believe that's how you say it, M. Toomey, M. Toom, um, Herbie Hancock, Jimmy Heath, Ed Blackwell, and Billy Bonner plays on Kawida, the track Kawida, I believe. 
that. Like I said, awesome spiritual jazz. Highly recommended from me. Um, yeah. I know uh, Andrew got this recently as well as VCLT. And um, like I said, just check it out if you're not familiar with it and you're into uh, free jazz, spiritual jazz at all, you know, definitely, definitely check it out. Great find right there. And it wasn't too expensive, so. Next one here, we got uh, kind of like a funk jazz rec uh, record. Eddie Henderson, Heritage. This has been at my shop for a while, but um, I think I wanted like eight bucks for it. But I ended up coming across this just by chance, and it was like two bucks, so definitely grab it. Really great jazz funk uh, fusion on Blue Note as well. These black notes, black blue notes, whatever. Um, yeah, this one came out in 76, I believe, but most of his stuff is good. Um, Realization, Inside Out, Sunburst, all pretty decent. I think Realization, Inside Out might be my favorite, not, along with this one. Really good. Um, yeah, like I said, really solid, really fusion y uh, jazz funk stuff. Really funky, too. Oh, you got Julian Priester on um, trombone, Patrice Russian on piano, clavinet, synthesizers, Hadley Kalaman on um, clarinet and sax, flute, Paul Jackson, M. Toomey again, Mike Clark, and Billy Hart. So pretty, pretty damn good lineup on there, in my opinion. Um, yeah, even though it's a later uh, record, definitely, if you see it for a good price, pick it up. Um, if you like funk, like I said, really solid. Uh, Funky fusion joint, so pretty cool. Most of his records are good too. Probably right up until this one, which came out in '76. In my opinion, it's probably like his best, his uh, best, you know, latest one. All right, now kind of moving away from the jazz. Um, like I've said, I've kind of been jumping more into a rock, psych rock, stuff like that. So folk, you know, other genres. So these next two I got in a um, trade with uh, David, Mr. Sequoia Flame. He was cool enough to send me these, which were actually put out by a member of the VC, um, recorded I should say, because David had a, definitely had a helping hand in releasing these. These are the schematics for Blank Stare Records. First one is Acid Rain, and then we got um, Kiss of Death, sorry. Um, uh, not sure which one of these can't get off first, actually, to be honest with you, but we'll show them both. So, really great, just like psych, um, acid rock, I guess, kind of stuff. This one came out in 2013, and this one, this one's really cool, it's got a gatefold. Love the artwork on this one. Really cool gatefold. It's on the back artwork. Yeah, but I'm recorded by Jeff Greer, who's a member of VC. Um... Uh, not sure which year this one came out on, sorry. I'm not sure which one came out first. I have to listen to these a few times and I like them. This one came out in 2012. So yeah, this one did come out first. Like I said. Um, really good though, really good psych, um, that kind of stuff. So I believe the lineup on both of these, you got uh, Jeff Greer plays um, the uh, Fender Rhodes organ. Um, I guess he plays drums as well, Moog. Zach Taylor who does uh, vocals and Glockenspiel, organ, Mellotron. John Webb, who, uh, bass, Wade Dunham, who plays guitar, and David, Davin, or Davin Burson, who also plays guitar and bass, and drums, I guess, additional instruments, so, but yeah, really great stuff on uh, both of these, cool VC connection, um, I've seen them around in the VC for a while, but never been able to pick them up until, uh, now, so, thank you, David, this was cool, definitely highly enjoyed these. Moving on, we have a, uh, not really a rock, this is more electronic style stuff from 1970, a Canadian record actually. This is uh, Cyrinx, I believe it's how you pronounce it, Cyrinx. Um, Self-titled, from Canada, uh, came out in 19, I think I said 1970, I think I said that. Um, um, these guys only around for a couple of years, from 70 to 72, I believe. They came out with two albums um, and a single. This is the first album, and basically it's a trio 
John Mills, Cockle, Cockle, uh, Doug Pringle, and Alan Wells. So I guess John Mills, Cockle, or Cockle is the um, kind of like the leader. He's the one that formed the group. Um, yeah, but really cool, like ex uh, experimental electronic stuff. Um, ambient, I guess, at times. Pretty dark. It's more darker. Um, really cool, though. So now on the True North. Records, which I guess is a Colombian label, Colombian, Canadian label, sorry, Canadian label, uh, 1970, yeah, but if you're into electronic stuff, I definitely recommend checking this out, so, yeah, um, moves, piano, their organ, um, saxophones, drums, uh, like hand drums, gongs, yeah, really cool stuff. I recommend this. I guess this is an all electronic, um, all instrumental record. I think the second one actually has vocals on it, although I haven't heard the second one yet. So, yeah, really cool though. I do like electronic stuff. Um, not really, you know, not really my go-to genre, but it's definitely cool stuff like this. I do enjoy, but I got this in a trade, so. Might be up for trading it or something, but yeah, definitely a uh, cool listen. Kind of darker electronic stuff. This next one, um, really cool find. Uh, Tony actually told me about it. Uh, it was at the shop. I knew it was at the shop. I saw it online, but um, condition kind of put me off. And I didn't actually see the record. I just saw the condition. And when stuff's like kind of you know in good condition, I'm kind of like eh on it. Not really my thing, but my shop definitely grades conservatively very conservatively and um, this is a record that I must have for getting into rock, psych rock, soft machine, uh, prog rock, soft machine, self-titled, their first album, um, definitely must have as you guys know. This is an original, quite beat though, it was uh, 18 bucks, a little bit beat, this is starting to come unglued here, the uh, front part, um, it does have the wheel inside there, it does have the, uh, if you're allergic to butt, um, don't look. It's got the, uh, yeah, the infamous, I guess, but I guess the, uh, later versions that had a censored, uh, didn't have the butt here, it was censored. I guess it wasn't on the back either, I don't know. On the probe label, ABC probe, I guess it is. Not familiar with it. But really great, just a Prague site, Canterbury, I guess it's called, um, yeah. So the record's not in the best shape. It is a bit beat, but um, it plays well. Play, it plays quite well. A little bit of background noise in spots, but it looks a lot worse than it actually plays. So I was just happy to get it because I know um, it does go for a bit. So it's cool to get it. I'll probably have to pull it back together. But Soft Machine, self-titled, really cool. Um, definitely looking forward to picking up more of their stuff and getting more into uh, Prague's like stuff. The stuff like this is stuff that I like. I'm not the biggest fan of lots of uh, 60s and 70s psych that came out around that time, but stuff like this, definitely up my alley, so. Really cool to find that. And another one from uh, Mr. Fart Boy as well. Another one that turned me on to and hooked me up was Jerry Moore. Uh, Life is a Constant Journey Home folk album on ESP. This one came out in um, 67, I believe. Don't quote me on that, but I believe it was 67. Really cool, um, dark, soulful folk. I believe this was his only album. Um, Gary Moore on guitar and vocals, Eric Gale on guitar, Bill Salter on bass, Warren Smith on drums, Ralph McDowell on congas. Um, yeah, really, really great. Like I said, just um, if you're into folk at all, or if you're not, maybe check this one out. Definitely a great addition to my ESP collection. Um, yeah. Really, really good. It's a dark, really um, awesome soul album. Definitely a lot of feeling in this one. So. And that's it. I'm going to try to keep this one a little bit shorter the other ones. Um, thank you all very much for watching. I hope everyone is doing well. I haven't been buying a ton of stuff lately. Try and cut down a bit. Um, I do still have more stuff to show though. 
I don't know, I fought a while ago, got a trade, stuff like that, so. So I guess that's it, once again, hope everyone's well, um, nice to see some videos, and um, I'll talk to you guys soon, alright, later.